We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to building the Afford a Plane. Boy, we've made a lot of progress here. And I think we still have a lot more progress to go before we're done. But step by step, inch by inch, we're getting closer and closer. We have some odds and ends to take care of. So let's get started. And here we go. We'll put the nut on the top as we did before. Don't let it get away. And then a Clico in the bottom and that will hold it in a very firm position. And now we get to see the relation of our bearing to our push-pull tube. Now we have the bearing and the push-pull tube at approximately the same height. Our goal now is to create an arm, something like this, and I'll show you how I made this, that will sit on the bearing and allow it to rotate. And this will allow the support of the tube over here. But of course, I've made it slightly shorter than the tube. And the point of that was so that we could connect. Now this is an Adele clamp used in aviation circles for holding cables and tubes and all sorts of things made out of uh, steel covered with a rubber sheath but uh, obviously very strong. It's made for all sorts of things and the idea is that we're going to attach it like this and either attach it above or below or you can even rotate it around the idea is to get the best fit basically we want to support it not push it up or push it down but support it in its natural location from an up and down standpoint and then bolt it to our arm here and as the tube moves back and forth the bearing will support it and keep it from going up, down, left or right. So our first job is to make sure you're happy with the height of the arm and remember that's why we clamped it on so that we can still adjust it before drilling and attaching and we also have a couple of rivets under a couple of washers underneath the bearing that can raise and lower it. But the idea is that we want to come basically in line with the push-pull tube. Nothing super critical other than it should be right in line with it. That way when you put a clamp here you have a number of options of clamping it in one way or another to grab it. So let's talk about how I made this arm which sits nicely on top of the bearing. So my arm was made from a standard one and a half by one and a half by eighth inch piece of angle like we've been using. The only difference is, is I cut off most of one of the sides. And by leaving even just a little on like this, you really strengthen this arm. So I just used my bandsaw to cut that down to, you know, just about a quarter inch up. And of course, the length is based on how far it is from the bearing to your push-pull tube. And then I used a uh, drill with a step drill to open this up to the proper size so that the bearing would fit through. And then, of course, I am, once we have determined that we're happy with the length and size of this, we will create our rivet connections to the bearing. And in fact, that's what I'll do next. So by simply inserting this in place, I can adjust it to whatever position I want. And then I'm going to pick four locations and drill for four 
rivets, and that'll be more than enough to hold this securely in place. And then I'll set the rivets from the top down, basically hiding the flange of the bearing. And there we have it riveted on. I rivet from the top. Also, here's our mounting block now riveted to our vertical member. I riveted from this side. And now, of course, we'll use a bolt and attach these as they go, and we'll install and see how this appears. And here we have it all installed with temporary hardware. And we can see the difference in the length and height in relation to our push-pull tube. And then we will take our Adele clamp and then see what the best fit is for this underneath, above, or flip it around. And that will take up any height differences you have. The idea is not to pull it or push it in any one direction too much, but try and keep it more or less where it naturally is. And pick a mounting hole and drill that, and then we can use a bolt to make more of a permanent attachment there. And here's a picture of the installed Adele clamp. There's not much weight because as long as you have the height set so that the rod is not being pushed up or down, then there's very little stress in this area. And let's go and operate the stick and see how it all functions. And then, of course, we need to replace our temporary hardware with permanent and don't forget that we need a bushing behind or in between the tube and the angle where I'm putting my finger in there. It's left and right with the stick and then forward and back. So there's no single way to create this rotating arm. You can come up with your own variations, but this is an example of one way that seems to work just fine. Now we're going to construct and install the down tubes. Now the down tubes are tubes that go from the top of the fuselage and it's like the fourth bolt up. I just have it jury rigged up there and when we come down it goes to the very end of our landing gear support. Now I have a straight tube going from top to bottom and you can picture one of those on both sides of the fuselage. The problem is is that that's more of a suggestion of where the tube needs to go. In reality we don't probably want a straight tube. Reason being if you notice it can get a little restrictive as you sit in your seat for the uh, rudder pedal and for climbing in. Though you could do it this way and I'm sure it has been done but we have the blessing to modify this tube and as you look at other Afforda planes already in flight just about everyone has modified these tubes. In other words not make a straight shot but make a bend in it such that possibly it goes forward a little bit and hopefully more straight up so that you don't have to try and get your leg pinched in there. 
And I do suggest that you look at other pictures of people who have built them on the interweb out there. Another reason is this tube forms the basis of your instrument panel. Now there will be one on the other side, of course, too, and I assume most people will make them symmetrical. But also your windshield as you sit here, this would be the uh, attachment for the windshield. I'll come look down the center here of the aircraft. Engine sits here, and then the pilot is back in there. So, what you need to do is experiment a little bit after looking at the internet and seeing what's out there. Come up with a tube and do some modeling to see what you would like to do. But basically we're going to start from a stainless steel U-bracket down at the end of our landing cross member. This out here of course will be for our front strut on the wing and then coming straight up at the gusset should be your fourth bolt. And on the fourth bolt up you should have a stainless steel U-bracket, the same with on the other side. Over there. So let's look at some ideas. What I found really valuable in modeling how that tube should go from one spot to the other end is I picked up some scrap and I believe this is called SST stainless steel tubing well anyhow it's used for propane and natural gas uh, piping within a home it's stainless steel spiral in the middle covered with a plastic coating but it sure is nice to form and bend into different shapes. It's kind of expensive when you buy a complete roll of it, but if you can get your hands on a four foot piece of half inch or three quarters, um, that's what I use to play kind of what if games in different shapes and bends, as we'll see um, when I mocked it up on my plane. But just an idea if you have some sort of stiff tubing that will help you uh, imagine what it will look like when you install these two upright members. After experimenting and just playing around for a while, I came up with something that I can live with. This is certainly a personal choice, but this looks like something I'm going to go with. Basically, it's very simple. One curve at the bottom, and that bottom curve helps give us a little more room forward and also for the stick clearance. Now keep in mind as we look this direction we have left room for the pilot's leg. So it goes straight up until it starts that first and only curve. Even though it's a single curve it does go at a bit of an angle for the purpose of meeting the location at the very top where it, it's meant to go, but all of this at this location is straight, even though my mock-up might not look very straight. So basically just one curve in it. And obviously there's many choices that would work. Looking at it from the front, we can see the angle it makes towards the top and then the curve at the bottom that angles not only backwards but also inwards to match up at the two points. I removed the tube that I was mocking up and you can see the single bend. The rest is supposed to be straight. And so what we're going to do is take our one inch tube and try and duplicate that bend the best we can. This was approximately four feet long. We have a six foot two. And I measure to where the bend begins, about 10 inches, so I marked that. So I'm gonna use my bender and put the arrow at that 10 inch mark and start bending. Now, obviously the, the radius is not gonna match this or anything like that, but ultimately we wanna get the angle the same, right? So the angle between here and here is what we have to duplicate here even though 
the actual radius of the curve will be different, of course. But the goal is to get it headed the right direction so that it hopefully uh, matches up with our U bracket at the other end. And we'll try this and see how it fits. Well, that doesn't look too bad. We have it temporarily placed in our lower U-clamp, and notice how it follows the stick, which is very nice, so that gives a lot more room for the stick. And then as we go up, obviously we need to cut it, and we will adjust our clamp, but that looks real nice. Let's look from the side now. And notice how we have quite a bit more leg space. Get the stick out of the way. And we should try it on the other side, the same piece of tubing. Here it is on the other side. Notice we go up and then narrows at the top. This is the same piece of tubing to show you that uh, when we need to make a second one, all we have to do is duplicate it exactly. And let's check from the pilot standpoint. We definitely have more leg room and it just makes the whole cockpit area, because that is the beginning of the cockpit going forward, makes that, uh, well, the instrument panel, anyhow, uh, much nicer and larger at the bottom as opposed to going straight up. And then, of course, it curves to the top. And so we will cut this as needed and then adjust this to the proper angle and then put a bolt through, and the same with the bottom. Of course, you can adjust these by just rotating them with a very large screwdriver device, even after the bolt has been tightened. So I'm going to make a second one while I have the angle down just about the way we want it. And there are many other shapes you should look at on the internet to get some ideas of what you think would be nice. There is nothing special or advantageous about the shapes I have created here. Just simple. Here is the rear spar wing attach bracket. Now it measures one and three quarters inches between the two tabs, that's a quarter inch bigger than we want. This is stainless steel and I got this from the Afford a Plane store. Let's look how it matches up with the actual spar. And notice you can see that quarter inch. And that is a good thing because that means that if you haven't measured the distance between the front and rear spar super accurately, you have a quarter inch of play or an eighth inch if you look at it from the center to one of the limits and let's go see where this attaches on the fuselage. It is at this location here that we're going to place our bracket and a long bolt because one of these will be on the other side and we'll have this go even with the top of the fuselage and then drill our spar after inserting it in here through there. And remember, we have forward and aft adjustment of about a quarter of an inch.
and we can go look at the forward attach bracket for our 2 inch spar. And here's our 2 inch bracket, stainless steel, from the Affordaplane store. And if we notice on the front spar of the wing, we have a smaller amount of play. In fact, this measures 2 and an eighth for our 2 inch spar, so we have a bit less of play. Let's go look at this on the fuselage. Now at the front is where our bracket's going to go. Of course we have a small issue here and that is this bolt is in the way if we want to keep this at the same horizontal angle as we did the rear one. Now there's not much we can do about that. In the future or in hindsight we should maybe move the wing attach hole back a quarter of an inch as well as the back hole back a quarter of an inch. Got to keep them separated by the same amount. But the point is that we're just too close to this to have the bracket sit satisfactorily because of the collision there. Well, that's great progress. Now, wait till you see what we have for you next time. And in the meantime, back to building.